Hey everyone, David here from another Eden Adventures. How are ya? As we wait for the next update, I thought I'd make a quick video with a simple title of 6 things players can do to max out their units even further using strategies you might have forgotten about because of all that content that's already out there. <sighs> this can be very useful for players who are stuck on a specific boss or are watching boss battles on YouTube and thinking how the hell are they doing this. I know a lot of people who subscribe to this channel might already know some of these tips but there may be something you've missed or completely forgotten about so stick around. And if you have your own tips on how to max out your units, share them below. I'm sure someone can benefit from them. Once again, don't forget to like and subscribe. This video was a lot of work, so a little bit goes a long way. And don't forget to follow me on Twitch too. Thank you so much for your support. Tip number one. Go to present day Garawella and upgrade your Graster. Have you got Graster but find it? kind of weak. If you've completed chapter 70 of the main story, there's actually a quick way to improve it, which some players may have forgotten about, myself included. Go to present day Garawal continent, head to the hidden village Itoise, then rush on over to the building in the top right. Speak to the pale dude and there you can quickly make your grass significantly more powerful. Note that these do cost dormant ores, which you can easily get from the Garawella Continent Dungeons, but more on that later. Tip number two. Have you got an already insanely powerful character like Formelopus or Eva and wondered, how can I make them even more powerful? Well, you greedy bastard, there's a way to do it, and that's through the unit's true VC Graster. VC Graster, or Vegetable Carrot Graster, or Very Cute Graster, or... Valor Chant Grasta is a Grasta that is unique to a unit that has the potential to give them enormous benefits in battle. The first thing you do is click on the link that I shared in the description of this video which will lead you to Miraheze's Grasta VC page. Once on this page, search for the unit you want to find VC Grasta for. If you do a search for Eva for example, you'll see that her VC Grasta is the Drago Mirage proof. So while you're still in present Garawala continent, go to the cat shrine, walk up until you find the table with a little gift thingy on it. Find the weapon of your unit, in Eva's case it's a staff, then head down to see the Drago Mirage proof. Click on it to see that you need 10 Drago Mirage tomes to unlock it. So where the hell do you get these Drago Mirage tomes? Google. Google the words another Eden Drago Mirage Tome or whatever tome or treaties you're looking for, click on the first Mirror Hezzy link you see and it will tell you that you can find it in Rift Breakers Another Dungeon. The hard part about this is that you then need to keep playing the Rift Breaker Dungeon until you eventually get 10 which can take some time but who cares because who needs a social life anyway. But wait, there's more. If you combine three VC grasses through the cat shrine in the future Garawala continent, you'll be able to unlock their true VC grasters, which gives triple the effect of that VC graster. And don't worry, not all VC grasters take that much effort. For example, you can get Aldo's VC graster called Dragon God's Might by beating the boss Chaos. Just have a look at that page that I've linked in this video to see how to unlock the VC grass of your unit as well as the kind of insane grinding you may need to have to put yourself through to find temporary happiness. I am happy. It's true, I am happy. Tip 3. Get a lot of frag of attacks for your graster quickly through the future Garawala Continent Dungeon. As you know, to activate good attack Grasta, you need a lot of frag of attacks. Two very popular ways to grind for frag of attacks is through either the Antiquity or Future Garawala Continent Dungeons. I used to be part of Team Antiquity until I've come to realize how quickly you can farm frag of attacks from Future Garawala instead. The trick is to buy a ticket to Satellite Stadium from the kid here. 
In Satellite Stadium, I usually get 42 to 80 frag of attacks or 20 crystal attacks from the treasure chests alone. On top of that, most battles in Satellite Stadium drop frag of attacks. And if you have my team set up, which I'll get into in more detail soon, you won't run out of MP so you can technically stay there forever or until your mobile phone explodes in your hand or your wife or your mother knocks you unconscious. The ticket to the satellite stadium costs 30 altered ores which should only take about 3 run throughs of this future Garawala dungeon which should be relatively fast if you have the right team. So here's my team. I use kids steal ability with every encounter to get extra items and I use Seven's monsoon skill to regenerate everyone's MP and HP. So everyone is always on full health and full MP. I use Suzette who has her true manifest equipped to quickly kill bosses. I never use Foreign and Cravo and they are just there to boost my light point counts because if you have over 360 total light or dark points in your party you'll often be rewarded with some great Graster or bonuses. Here's one quick hack for you. As soon as you enter future Garawala, head over to the left. You should be able to get around 8 altered ores, including the 1 or 2 altered ores you get from beating the horror. Tip 4. Get powerful weapons. For me, unlocking your unit's manifest weapon is a must. Further, if you unlock a unit's true manifest weapon, they retain the new skills obtained from this weapon without necessarily needing that weapon anymore. So with True Manifest Garyu for example, you can keep his ultra powerful Inferno skill and find a weapon with higher intelligence. So equip your weapons according to the needs of your units as well as the weakness of the boss you're trying to beat. Another is to finish Time Twisted Maze runs and trade your OO parts with this dude right here. Trading them unlocks a number of random weapons, some of which could be level 60 and more powerful than the ones you can get anywhere else. Don't make the same mistake as I did and tap on buy as this actually causes you to sell those weapons. Once you trade your OO parts, the weapons will automatically go into your inventory, so forget about clicking on buy. While we're here, let's talk about the chance scripts in tip number 5. Most people already know this, but as a reminder, you can buy chance scripts. You don't need to wait for them to randomly appear. Chance scripts are important in upgrading or sidegrading your units and can be difficult to obtain. The good news is you can actually save up and purchase them rather than just hope for the best. The first place you can get them from is here in, in Aratme's village with a man in the top right for 100 dig medals. The second predictable way to get chance scripts is from the Nopo Emporium where you can purchase one for 400 Tubaras gems. If there are any other ways to purchase chance scripts I've forgotten to mention, please mention them in the comments below. Tip number 6, get powerful badges. Let's look at Garyu again. If your key strategy is to obliterate your enemy with a super powerful magic offense, you'd need a badge that can greatly increase his intelligence. You can get some powerful stat boosting badges from Toto Theatre World. For example, this badge will give you plus 50 intelligence with the drawback being it subtracts your HP by 50%. But if you're aiming for a quick kill and have some great support units, then that shouldn't matter. Sebastian's Battle Simulator, which is in Elzion, is another place to get some powerful badges such as Bullseye, which gives damage plus 50% and of course there are badges which you can exchange with a giant cat at the phantom crystal dimension. If you somehow get 1850 poor stamps for example you can get the intelligence 50 badge which is insane. And I've got a bonus tip for you, tip number 7. Let's say you're a busy person and simply don't have the time to grind for any of this but you still want to beat a super boss, that's fine I've got you. The tip is this, just wait a few months. Power creep is very real in Another Eden and as it keeps releasing more and more powerful characters and upgrading existing ones, the once tough bosses will become incredibly easy. I go into this in more detail in my other video titled How I Can Beat Any Boss in Another Eden which I'll link below. Hopefully these tips will help you max out your characters but of course there are plenty more. Once again. 
If you have your own tips to share or have anything to add to what I've mentioned, comment below. I'm sure your comments will be able to help a lot of people. This video took a long, long time to make, so thank you for liking and subscribing. And if you want to see more behind the scenes stuff, check out my Twitch and follow me on Facebook to be notified when I go live. Love you all. See you in the next video.